Have you heard that the word saves? In this lesson, we will learn to only believe. Happy Sunday. Are you missing your Sunday school? Would you like to be a part of our Sunday school? Then like, subscribe, comment, ring the bell, and you'll be notified every time I post a new video on our Sunday school lesson. I have been thinking about doing a live Sunday school lesson and then doing a drawing somewhere during that lesson. Leave in the comments if you all would like to see me do that. A live Sunday school lesson and do a drawing within that lesson somewhere. Hi, I'm Regina Reed and I teach Sunday school at Antioch Missionary Baptist Church in Maple, Mississippi. Now let's get into this lesson. Today's lesson is The Word Saves. This is John, the 12th chapter, 44 through 50th verse. And our lesson aims today is one, recognize that Jesus is God. Two, de desire a closer relationship with God through choosing to follow Christ. And three, share with others the opportunity to come into the light of Christ. The background scripture for today is John, the 12th chapter, 44 through 50th verse. Our key verse is John, the 12th chapter and the 46th verse. Let's start with the prayer. Heavenly Father, we want to faithfully listen to and follow the words of your son. Show us how to make his word primary in our lives so that it will transform us. Remove any distractions that prevent us from faithfully obeying your son. Reveal to us how we might live as a witness to your salvation. In the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Introduction. Standing before the judge, a man walked into the police station so they could make his fingerprints. The process was very scary, but necessary for the legal proceedings. Police officers on duty asked for all of his personal information, shot several photographs of him, and took detailed prints of his fingerprints. His in interactions with the law continued over the next year. He, it was required to attend court hearings where he would stand before a judge and plead the particulars of his case. Some courtrooms were larger than others, but in each one, crowds of people heard him and details, heard the details of his case. Each hearing was a nerve wracking ordeal. His family was active in each appearance and he hoped that someday they would be united. Lest you misunderstood, it was, he wasn't accused of any crime. Him, him and his wife were getting through the tedious process of adopting a child born in a different country. Throughout the whole process, they followed the guidance of the family court judges and their lawyers. Even if, it didn't, if they didn't understand why behind some of the things like getting their fingerprints, they followed through because they wanted their family to be united. Now, ultimately, their patience and resolve paid off. Their growing family now includes a new child. The whole experience served as a reminder to the importance of belief of, and faith. They had to believe the adoption process would be resolved so long as they faithfully followed the directives or instructions of the authorities. If they disregarded their directives, the entire process might end abruptly without the completion. Jesus had strong words regarding belief and faithfulness. His words have eternal consequences, more serious than from any judge or lawyer. Lesson context. After a notable introduction, John, first chapter, first and fiftieth verse, John's gospel focuses on the bulk of Jesus' public ministry, his miraculous works, and teaching in this section of the gospel. John recorded seven accounts of Jesus' miraculous acts and seven accounts of Jesus' teaching. Together, they highlight the way Jesus showed his mission to the world, a mission given by his heavenly Father, but throughout this section of the gospel, Jesus' audience was, un was unstable and unwilling to accept his teaching. They saw his miracles and enthusiastically received him. However, 
Far too often, they fail to rightly understand his teaching. Jesus did not fulfill the hopes and wishes they desired from a Savior or Messiah. As a result, many stopped following Jesus. Despite seeing and hearing Jesus' belief was not always present. Today's scripture text marks a transition to a third section of the gospel. This section tells of the events surrounding Jesus' death and resurrection. Given that half of John's gospel is dedicated to the events of Jesus' final week, there can be no doubt of John's focus. A savior who does miraculous acts and proves eternal teaching is nothing without the events of the Passion Week. This lesson scripture text serves as Jesus' final public dis discourse to his generally unbelieving audience. Immediately prior to this text, John provides some context surrounding the teaching. John mentions the words of the ancient prophet Isaiah in order to explain the situation Jesus faced. Even as Jesus performed many miraculous acts, there were people who failed to believe and follow him. This reality was highlighted in the nature of Jesus coming into Jerusalem. Many people celebrated his entry, but there would be other people who would call for his crucifixion several days later. As a result of their unbelief, many people would experience certain consequences and judgments. And our lesson scripture is John, the 12th chapter, 44 through the 50th verse. Verse 44, Jesus cried and said, he that believeth on me, believeth not on me but on him that sent me. Now Jesus was speaking to no one in particular and therefore to every reader of the gospel. The purpose of the utterance is to confirm and explain from Jesus' own lips the gospel writer's summary of Jesus' ministry up to that point. Thus, this passage is intended to explain what it means to believe in him and what it means to disbelieve. It is a decision that every living soul must make at some point. Verse 45. And he that seeth me seeth him that sent me. These verses stand on their own as an overview of the main theme of Jesus' ministry. Jesus is preaching to no one but the readers of the gospel. Verse 46. I am come to light into the world that whoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. He was extending to his hearers the last chance to escape from the darkness by believing in him. The very presence of Jesus in the world provokes people to respond. He promises that those who respond positively shall not remain in darkness. Verse 47. And if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not, for I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. Jesus' mission as the light has the primary purpose of giving the light of life, and his mission of judgment has the primary purpose not of condemnation, but of salvation. Those who accept Jesus' offer of light and live their lives accordingly, come to understand the blessings they have found. In His light helps the believer to see what truly matters in life and to rearrange their priorities accordingly. Verse 48. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him the word that I have spoken. The same shall judge him in the last day. People condemn themselves by their own actions and failures to receive God's word, since the Father has given all judgment to his Son. The criterion of judgment consists in whether someone receives the Son and bears fruit in works of love. A person's final judgment and eternal destiny is being determined by his or her present response to Jesus. Verse 49, for I have not spoken of myself, but the father which sent me. He gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. 
those who refuse his offer end up condemning themselves. People's responses to Jesus carry such weight because of his relationship to the father as his obedient son and perfect representative. Jesus does not speak on his own. Rather, he speaks on behalf of the one who sent him and commanded him what to say and speak. Verse 50. And I know that his commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the father said unto me, so I speak. The awareness that even though he is the speaker, the words are the father's has been an underpinning of the whole of Jesus' speech to the world and against the world. This is another way of stating the promise made in the prologue to those who received him. He gave power to become children of God. But the prologue also recalls that he came unto his own and his own received him not. In rejecting Jesus and his word, one rejects the father who sent him and condemn him. What word to speak? The word will be the judge on the last day. This obedient one calls out loudly so the world may come to see the light and become co-partners with him in his redeeming work on behalf of humanity. Conclusion. After his teaching, Jesus' public meeting would be greatly limited. He would celebrate Passover with his disciples. This is John 13, chapter 1st to 30th verse, and give them his final teaching before his trial and crucifixion. Therefore, we can look at Jesus' teaching as his final public teaching and warning on the saving nature of the word. True belief requires confession that Jesus is Lord and his life changing resulting from that confession. Disciples of Jesus make obedience most important as his light directs their actions. In Jesus' time, many people saw God's miraculous power at work in him. But when time came to listen and obey his words, many people stopped following him. For this reason, Jesus taught in the necessity of belief and of judgment. Later in John's gospel, Jesus said, if ye love me, Keep my commandments. That's John the 14th chapter and the 15th verse. Love is demonstrated by right belief in hearing and obeying Jesus' word. All believers must faithfully abide in Jesus' words. In the future, his words will judge all humanity. Disciples will love and follow him. Jesus' words will transform us and lend us into a life that bears the fruit of obedience. James, the second chapter and the 14th verse. Jesus was brought spiritual light into the world. Will you receive it? Thought to remember, Jesus brings spiritual light. I am thinking about doing a YouTube live Sunday school. And during that Sunday school, I might do a giveaway. So you are leaving the comments if you would like to see me do a YouTube live Sunday school. And we'll, we'll discuss the date and time of this lesson. But just let me know if that's something y'all would like to do. Where y'all can actually interact with the lesson while I'm teaching it. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Leave in the comments for me. If you have enjoyed this lesson, give us a thumbs up. Share the lesson. Get your free digital prayer journal below. Get your shot. Love each other. Stay six feet apart. And I will see you all next week.